everybody. Well, welcome to My Father's Milk House, where I try to take um, biblical principles and bust off little nuggets and share them with you and uh, hopefully encourage you to scripturally explore your faith walk with uh, Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, and uh, Yahweh, your Father in Heaven, who is the author of uh, the scriptures, and he wrote them for us to benefit from them. Uh, one thing I was just thinking about this morning is uh, in the milk uh, in the milk of things, right? What you want to do is you want to start off with a good product, right? So I, I uh, feed my cow good grain, and uh, she gets good hay and uh, water, good place to sleep and stuff. So I get a good product. And then when you're milking her, you gotta watch it because little bits of hay or whatever get in there. So you want to use a filter. You want to filter out anything like that, and I use a double filter. And then what you end up with is a good, clean, pure product. There's uh, life in, uh, in the milk. And there's life in the milk of the Word. But you want to make sure that what you're getting is uh, properly strained, which happens through prayer and studying, getting much counsel. Uh, I'd also like to do a shout out to Melanie, who hates my hat. She thinks I need a better hat. Well, feel free to send me a new hat, Melanie. I found myself in Ephesians. Now, at the beginning of Ephesians, we've gone through uh, a couple times. But I'll just hit it real quick. Um, Paul is exhorting us as an emissary of the anointed Yeshua, to the will of the Almighty, to the holy ones found in Ephesus and even the faithful ones in the anointed, loving kindness to you and peace from the Almighty, our Father, Adonai Yeshua, the United. So he's just basically saying greetings from Jesus Christ. And he goes on to explain how the people of Ephesus were once scattered Gentiles. Gentile means they were cast aside because of previous sins. You know, Israel was scattered. Um, Judah hung around but became corrupt in uh, legalistic uh, traditions of men. And then Yeshua came, tried to straighten, well, he didn't try, he, he uh, re-explained everything, as the Son of God only could. And uh, then he even ratified the promise made to Abraham in Genesis 15 by his personal death on the cross for sin. And he died on that cross, and his robe was not torn. He is the new high priest. Okay, so we, looking back at his work, can walk in faithfulness knowing that we have an advocate and we have um, a perfect high priest that made that final atoning sacrifice when he ascended. Remember when he, he, when he arose and Mary wanted to touch him, he said, don't touch me. I haven't finished my job. I mean, he said it is finished, meaning he atoned, but his last... Um, task was to go before the Father with the atoning blood of his personal sacrifice and um, sprinkle it on the altar in, in heaven. And then he came back, remember? He came back, glorified, was able to still eat, have fellowship, but he was able to move about with no restrictions. He had a glorified body like us who follow him, who have pledged our faithfulness to Yeshua, who believe on him. We also have that opportunity to be resurrected and then have a brand new glorified body. And that glorified body will not have restrictions. We'll have the Torah written on our heart. We'll know how to love and purity. We'll have no sense of greed or sin or addiction or anything else. We are going to be um, empowered literally as Christ was when he came back to share a meal with his disciples and John and um, 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 we'll be able to share, teach, all that kind of stuff. So now, though, we are having an incredible battle. I have, a, I have my own battles with procrastination. Even seeing this gallon and a half of milk, um, my, uh, I haven't milked, milked her in a while, thankfully. Yahweh gave me a calf to keep her in milk. And um, so I was able to get back into it. And that's just, 
that is just like the Christian life where, I mean, we, we, we all fail in our, in our faithfulness to different extents, different things pull us away. Um, the cares of the world pull us away. Our personal battles with our flesh pull us away. Our um, struggles with uh, just life. And uh, Ephesians is a really um, encouraging word to me because Paul also struggled with many things. And even when he was writing these letters to the churches, he was in prison. He was able to walk out his faithfulness to Yeshua in a prison. We are free, most of us, to roam, to do, to work, to share, to love, and all that. So we don't have those same restrictions that Paul had. So um, it's a matter of simply walking in the promises of Yahweh and following the house rules. And he explains this throughout the book of Ephesians. In Ephesians 2, he even explains where we came from. You know, we were once dead in sin, we're now alive. We were once in wrath, and now we are, are saved. We are rescued from that. And then he goes on to explain, even in Ephesians 2.11, Therefore, remembering, we were once Gentiles. We were called uncircumcision by those called circumcision in the flesh. Meaning, the Jews at that time, and even now, have ordinate requirements to join their culture, their synagogues, and things like that. Whereas Paul's explaining that we receive the circumcision of our heart when we place our faith, pledge our faithfulness to Yeshua Messiah. Now, there's still um, requirements. You know, there are the commandments of Yahweh. They are not burdensome. They are light. Uh, I'm not going to go into those. You can read all about that, or we can talk about that later. But um, he goes on to explain we were Gentiles in the past, Ephesians 11 says, and we were not with the anointed one. Okay, This is Ephesians 12. We, we did not have the anointed. Then he says, But now, by way of Yeshua, you have been formerly far away. Formerly far away, you have been made near by the blood of the anointed, because he is the peace offering for us to Yahweh, who has made the two into one, and the partition fence has been opened, who the hostility against his flesh which was the former norm for sentences and condemnation. We are now um, come into the citizenship of the Holy Ones, okay? So he goes on to explain that. We are grafted into the vine. That is grafted into Israel. We are now part of the seed of Abraham, okay? And so now we're walking this out. We're just awakening from a sleep. We're trying to figure this all out. And that is the point with the filtration, okay? You have to be very uh, careful who you're listening to and um, what traditions that you're following because you don't want to just be following the traditions of men because that's what got Israel in, in trouble in the first place. They decided to go against the traditions of Yahweh. Very simple. They follow a sky clock. They follow the moon and the sun. Not to worship them, but like your watch, you don't worship your watch, but you say, well, if I got to be somewhere at noon, you got to be somewhere at noon, and you look at your watch, it's 1130, you got to get a move on or whatever. In the same way, Yahweh says, hey, you got to be somewhere on, you know, the Sabbath, you want to rest on the Sabbath. You, there's some feasts and celebrations, there are appointed times, time, you know, there's times for this and times for that. There's a time to reap, a time to sow, and all that. And Yahweh's been very gracious and a very orderly father showing us all these things in his scriptures even. Um, so we are grafted into the vine of Yeshua through faith and we are walking out faithfulness. In the same way when you're married, you pledge faithfulness to your wife and then you walk this out and stumble. You both stumble and this and that as you learn to work with one another, love one another, apologize to one another and um, pray with one another and read, read the scriptures with one another, and um, grow and mature. Yeah. Ephesians 5, a lot of people will focus on the marriage passage, and you can't have a marriage passage without understanding what you're imitating, okay? So, 
I'm supposed to be an imitator of the Almighty. Do I do that with perfection? No. That is why I have my High Priest Yeshua and the Holy Spirit, right? And who convicts me when I have fallen, failed, and I have the choice. Do I, you know, bind myself and, you know, get proud and frustrated or get full of anxiety? Or do I become weak and faint? That kind of stuff. Or do I admit my wrongdoings and carry on? So in Ephesians 5, it says, Therefore, becoming imitators of the Almighty. So how do we imitate the Almighty? Well, thankfully, we have a handbook, and the handbook shows us how to be imitators of the Almighty. There's examples of the people who have, examples of people who have not, and uh, the instructions are, are right there at the front of the book. And um, Paul is writing kind of a, uh, a summary while pointing us to the back of the book. And then in verse 14, he says to be awakening one who is sleeping and be risen from the dead and the anointed one will shine on you. That is taken from Isaiah 60. Be rising, be shining because your light will have come. In Daniel 12, it also says, and in that time, one who is like God will stand up, great prince who is standing over the sons of your people. And he wants us to imitate that um, behavior. Now, how do we do that? Obviously, kindness, love, long-suffering, gentleness, um, all that. But what does that mean? Paul, when he gives us a, a, an exhortation, he uses the previous books. And that's why the Bereans, when they were listening to him, took his words and then researched them. And how do they research them? In that time, they had only the scrolls. So that's, that's that. Ephesians 5 goes on to talk about wives and husbands and, and uh, people get caught up in wives submit to your husbands, husband lead your wives. Well, that is also taken right, right from Genesis. It's because the two have become one and everybody has their roles, responsibilities, and, and um, um, the head of the, of the husband is literally our Messiah. So, that is what the problem becomes is when you begin to worship a leader, like a person, instead of taking what that person says gladly and then researching what they say. Um, you, your filters can get clogged, or you can put the wrong filter in, or you don't put enough filters in, and you end up getting bad bits and pieces in your pure milk, right? So, I guess uh, in this little quick uh, milk house thought, it's an exhortation to all of us to take what our leaders say with gladness, but then go and find out what they said and how it lines up with the scriptures. Oftentimes we get stuck calling out for, all, for people to listen to us and obey us, but who are we obeying? Are we obeying our pastor or are we obeying the word of God? And is there a difference? Because the truth is simple. It's unwinding traditions and theologies that's um, more difficult. So a person needs to separate themselves from their theologies and traditions and just look what is the absolute truth of the matter, you know, the simple truth of the matter. And even in Ephesians 6, it says, Children, be obeying your parents in Yahweh, for this is right. Be honoring your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may be well with you, even that you may live long on earth. And fathers, don't be creating anger in your children, but be nourishing them with the discipline and advice of Yahweh. Discipline and advice of Yahweh. So, um, yeah, that's all I have for today. Stick to the pure milk of the word. And make sure if you're listening to someone, filter out what they say and get back to the basic truth. And I hope you guys have a blessed day. And uh, if you're in a region like I am, stay warm. And if you're uh, in Arizona, stay cool.